Well, we are less than four hours away from the start of former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. This is a first for a president who's already left office. Democrats and some Republicans argue the former president incited an insurrection, but many Republicans say impeaching someone who is no longer in office is unconstitutional. A lot to sort out here. So we do want to bring in political analyst Mark Mills to help us sort all of this out this morning. Mark, good morning. It is so good to see you this morning. Good morning, Danielle. So let's start off with this question. What can we expect to see today? How will this trial be structured? Well, today we're going to see the Senate voting on the rules. The rules were established yesterday under the Constitution. The Senate sets rules for, for the proceeding. There are no set rules. So each side uh, in this case will have 16 hours. Normally, I think we're going to see 18-hour days, but today the Senate votes on the rules. They're going to vote on an issue of whether this process is constitutional. The Senate, by majority vote, will say yes and proceed to arguments tomorrow around noon. It's very possible uh, that unless the House prosecutors call witnesses, this will be wrapped up by early next week. Can we talk a little bit more about the constitutionality of this? Is there kind of a Certainly. definite answer uh, as to whether or not it is lawful to impeach a president who is no longer president, a president who is no longer in office? Right. It depends on who you ask. Those who believe it is constitutional claim that the Constitution does not prohibit uh, this process and that Trump committed these acts while in office and therefore this is impeachable and a Senate trial can continue. If Trump uh, is convicted and he, he won't be, there won't be 17 Republicans who will join 50 Democrats to reach that two thirds mar uh, threshold of conviction. But there is a provision to, uh, if he is convicted, to prohibit someone from running for federal office again. Yeah. And that's what the Democrats are, are, are tying their hopes to. Uh, and so the, the idea that it's not constitutional comes from Republicans and also some legal scholars who believe that the whole point of impeachment is to remove somebody from office, but Trump's already been removed from office. So therefore, this is a moot exercise. And the other part of it is there's nothing in the Constitution that says just because he's not in office doesn't mean he can't be impeached. I know you can interpret that a couple of different ways, and that's a little, absolutely yeah, what's going to be happening today. I do want to talk a little bit now about the kind of the political ramifications for each party, because right. how will this affect Republicans? How will this affect Democrats? And also, how will this affect former President Donald Trump? Well, it's going to be profound beyond what goes on in this proceeding. It's very clear that Democrats will not get the votes to convict Trump in this Senate trial. They're not going to hit that two thirds threshold, but they're trying to convict Trump in the court of public opinion. They're trying to tag Trump and mark his legacy with this violence, destruction, and death that occurred at the Capitol on uh, January 6th. Republicans, meanwhile, are going to going to hide behind the cloak of constitutionality, yeah. which would uh, which would basically absolve them from having to blame Trump for his actions. I'm going to be watching three things, uh, even though the the it's a foregone conclusion what's going to happen. There's going to be news here, and I'm going to be watching three things. Number one, did the White House know of intelligence reports that violence was likely to occur before Trump spoke? Secondly, uh, did Trump know that there were some in that, uh, in that mob that wanted to find Mike Pence and threatened to execute him? Because Trump tweeted in the middle of that insurrection that, that Pence lacked courage to um, to hold back the election certification, which he had no right to do. Pence had no right to do anyway. And, and I want to see if what Trump did during the insurrection, there were reports that he called House and Senate members and asked them to either change their votes or stand with him on denying election certification. Uh, Trump's people will say that Trump soundly uh, condemned the violence. That's simply not true, and in fact may have used it to try to sway votes. It is going to be an interesting next couple of weeks. I so appreciate your perspective because you always kind of uh, put it in layman's terms that we can all understand. Mark Mills, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Danielle. Have a great day. My pleasure as well. Amen.